Welcome to The God Room with Danny Hobble. Danny's art ministry has touched millions of people around the world. For the past four decades, Danny has shared his talent by spreading the Word of God through art. Join us now as Danny shares his inspiration behind the talent in The God Room. Hi, welcome to The God Room with myself, Danny Halbom, and my wife, my beautiful wife, <laughs> Diana Halbom. Hi. Uh, today, what I wanted to talk to you about is um, something that the Lord shared with me about, oh, about two days ago uh, in my God Room. Now, my God Room happens to be actually just a back porch where there's nothing out there. I just take my morning cup of coffee and I go out and have a cup of coffee and sit and wait upon the Lord to see what He's got for me or if I have something to talk to Him about, I talk to Him about that. The whole main thing with the God Room is the fact that, you know, it's, um, it's someplace that's just you and God. You don't have any phones, you have no computers, uh, no kids running around, uh, it's just you and God alone. That's your God Room. Like I say, again, it could be, you know, in your car or, mm. you know. Well, mine is usually in my bedroom. Or in the bedroom yeah. or, yeah, yeah, or bathroom, or whatever. I mean, right. wherever you have you know, a quite a long time with God. Uh, that's your God room at that point. Yeah. Um, and a couple of days ago, I was sitting, having a cup of coffee, and uh, it's at my back porch, uh, lanai out there, it's just a screened in thing, and I was just sitting down, having a cup of coffee, waiting on the Lord, and I didn't hear anything from God, so I was like, okay, well, I'll wait until I hear something from the Lord. And as I was waiting, you know, you're looking around, and I'm looking out my back porch out there, and off in the distance, um, there's a house back behind us. And it happened to be a fairly windy day at that, at that point. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm watching the house, and I, it caught my eye, the fact of the structure of the house was, was standing there, and it was stable, and, and, and just quiet, and looked strong, and sitting up there, and the clouds were moving by fast. You know, you get those days when the, the yeah. low clouds, whatever, right. and they just move by fast. And it just caught my eye, and I was just looking at that. And it, it was, it, what hit me the, was the comparison of the two, was the stability and the solidness of the house against the clouds and even the trees that were moving and stuff. Everything else seemed to be in motion, and it wasn't stable. You know, the clouds were, you know, the sun was getting brighter, it was getting dimmer, and the clouds were moving. And what hit me was the comparison between man and God, or more importantly, how we see, um, see things. Mm -hmm. Because from a, a man's point of view, from our eyes, our physical eyes point of view, it seemed like the house was solid and, and strong and not movable, where the heavens was just moving constantly mm -hmm. and you didn't know where it was going. That was man's point of view. And then God was just kind of speaking to me, again that inner voice, not like an audible thing, but the inner voice, and he was saying, okay, this is the picture you see now. He says, look at this same picture the way that I see it. Mm -hmm. And we are supposed to be uh, it was supposed to be more like Christ. That's our whole purpose, uh, purpose, is to be more and more like the Lord. And the Lord is God, and that's how he sees things. He doesn't see things in the now, in the picture here. He looks at the big picture. Mm -hmm. So he was saying, okay, that's what you're seeing now. What will you see if you're in the exact same spot 2,000 years from now? Mm -hmm. What will the picture look like? And I'm thinking about that and I'm going, well, in 2,000 years, if that house is still standing, and I don't think so, but even if the house is still standing there, it'll be in ruins. It'll just be rubble sitting there. Yeah. That's not going to last. Right. Yet, the skies will be almost identical. The clouds yeah. will still be going by, right. the trees, you know, if the mm -hmm. trees are there. But I'm just saying, the heavens will still be doing their thing. Mm -hmm and still be there in, in God's eyes, because he looks at the big picture, 
in God's eyes, and that's how we need to look at it, God is the stability. He is the, actually the only thing that is stable. Everything else is not stable. So we can't trust our eyes, mm -hmm. you know, or we can't see things the way that man looks at it, or it, it totally distorts, mm -hmm. or can distort, what the Bible is saying, mm -hmm. you know. Even in Isaiah 48, it says, the grass withers away, the flowers fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. And that pretty much says mm -hmm. it. I mean, you know, pretty much what I was mm -hmm. seeing was the fact that, you know, when we're, if we look at our own, through our own eyes, things that we see look strong and stable and, you know, people or, you know, history or, you know, uh, again, buildings or something, mm -hmm. they look like, you know, concrete steel. Oh, you can't right. tear them down. Well, you know, 9-11 kind of proved that, mm -hmm. yeah, you can. Yeah, the same perspective goes when we deal with relationships and mm -hmm. people in our prayer life. Because a lot of times the situation looks a certain way through our eyes. And it's uh, what is temporal or what is going on right now. But by looking through God's perspective and the way he sees a finished work even, he can see a finished work in that person where we would only see the flaws and the things that are going on exactly. right now, the right. drama, but when he sees them as a finished work, especially through the blood of Christ, where yeah. if, if we can actually come to a place where we see people we, we love or people struggling or the country situations that's going on around us through the blood of Jesus and through his God's perspective as a finished work. So we pray and we speak into we speak into that person or into that situation the will of God for what he is seeing as a final product you know because uh, speaking things through his word that is the truth like what is the truth is the truth where that person is right now and the struggles they're in or is the truth through Jesus Christ and from God's perspective but there's a lot more power when we see the reality of what God sees but we have to spend a lot of time with God to begin to have his eye yes, yes. and his feeling and see through that because that takes training and it takes a uh, renewed mind you know to have like praying that we would have the mind of Christ we really need the mind of Christ and the eyes of God to see things through his perspective well you know and that, and that brings us back to why we started this show the God room is because that's really what the God Room is all about. You know, if you want to get to know somebody, you know, and if you want to do the will of God and you want to please God, well, you have to know Him so that you know what to do that does please Him and what His will is. Right. And that will please Him more. And, you know, to know that it's like anybody. It's just like my wife here. If I want to please her and make mm -hmm. her happy, I have to know her. I have to know what she wants. Because maybe, you know, I was with some other woman, you know, years and years ago, and they liked um, whatever, uh, cinnamon sticks or something, okay? If I don't know my wife, I might go and mm -hmm. say, oh, I want to give her something. I get cinnamon sticks and bring it back because I'm thinking, oh, all women like mm -hmm. cinnamon sticks. And she's going, I don't like this. What did you get that me for? Mm -hmm. So if you want to please anybody, you have to get to know them. Right. And that's what the God Room is all about. When you spend quality, quiet, alone time with God, you, it's just you and God. So you're getting to know God. And you get to know God by being quiet and listening. You know, it, it's not like, you know, some of us pray and we just like, you know, oh Lord, you know, we're in a, in a terrible situation and we need your hand and please touch us and and we go on and on and on. And then when we're done, we get up mm -hmm. and we leave. And God is saying, well, wait a minute, I didn't have a chance to respond, mm -hmm. you know? And so if you want to pray about something in your God room, there's something pressing you, by all means pray. That's communicating with God. Mm -hmm. But communication is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. You also have to sit and wait to hear what he has to say. Well, go ahead. Uh, I like this morning when I was praying, um, a lot of times I get up and I think about what am I going to do today? Mm -hmm. And and I mm -hmm. calculate it depending on how I feel physically. 
Well, this morning the Lord, by spending time with the Lord, I'm beginning to think more like He thinks. And so I began to just stay in a faith mode and ask the Lord, what would you have me to do today? What What is your will for me today? And Lord, whatever your will is for me today, I am going to believe you for the strength. So okay. it, it comes from looking at the situation. So my truth, like your truth would be that building was solid. My truth would be I can only do what I physically feel up to doing. I'm looking at my circumstance. I'm looking at my health. I'm looking at my pain level as the truth instead okay. of looking at right. okay God I want I want the power and the power comes through the faith but the faith is unseen the faith is from a different perspective yes. like what he wants me to do today is from his perspective of something that is already done okay you know and I'm I used to see it as I don't know what I can do from hour to hour depending on my health but by changing the way that I he's changing my thought pattern where I was beginning to think and see through his perspective of once I know the mind of the Lord believing I'm gonna have the grace and I'm gonna have the strength yeah. to do because if he's set in motion if that is his truth for me that day and his journey and his will for me that day I have to just totally believe, not what I see or not how I feel, but I have to say, yes, Lord, whatever it is you would have me to do today, I'm, I'm believing you for the strength to do that. And it gave me peace and joy rather than waiting to feel good. Right. I was believing to have the strength and believing Him. So our truth and what we see or what we feel in our body, because people have a lot of health issues, and they might only fulfill the callings the Lord has on them according to how they feel. Yeah. And the Lord's trying to get them into a higher perspective of it's not about how you feel. It's seeking His will, taking that first step and believing for the strength and believing for the grace. Yeah. Because that is the truth. That is what is solid, is the grace that He gives us to fulfill whatever it is he has for us that day. See, and that was in your guide room. This and we, morning. When, the, yeah. when, when we came on the, on, the, on the air here this morning, um, you know, we like to do things uh, as the Spirit leads us. So, you know, we don't want to know exactly what we're going to say, because then it becomes a script thing, and we don't want to do that. We want to know pretty much what we're going to do, but kind of leave it open. That way there it gives room for the Holy Spirit yeah. to move. And so when we came in here, you know, I had... Uh, my visit with the Lord in, in the God room and what he told me about with the house and whatever mm -hmm. and um, apparently my wife had her visit with with the and Lord in yeah. a different way so I'm sitting back listening this is the first time I heard this so this and is kind of cool <laughs> yes yeah, see and and yeah. it's like really very cool but what you're saying is so true I mean yeah. you know it's no you you sent something that was really remarkable in there um, is like you know you were saying that you know well something that will happen whatever it is that you're going to be doing today you know if you look at it from God's perspective or let's say it this way if we look at it from our perspective it's like okay I don't know if I can do it in the sense that it hasn't been done yet mm -hmm. and we don't know what the results are going to be mm -hmm. where God looks at it as it's already been done because yeah. he knows the whole future mm -hmm. so he's going no it's already been done I already got everything taken care of so we're looking at the same thing and we're going, oh, it hasn't been done. And God's going, no, it has been done. Mm -hmm. And if we trust in him, it already has been done. And like you say, he gives yeah. us the grace to go through the day mm -hmm. where we may not. Very good. I like yeah. that. Yeah, and it really is that uh, alternation of the way he thinks. It's like with you, because mm -hmm. you're a visual person and you work in the art industry and everything to you is a creative process right. when you sit out in the god room and you're looking at the sky in the building he's working through a, a, a sensory part of your brain this is about right. you so your god room is personal the way he talks to you through visualization to me i have i have other areas where he talks to me through feeling through senses through uh because i have health problems and you don't 
everything kind of has been dictated around how I feel. And God is so wanting me to stop looking at that, how I feel, and looking at just asking Him, what is your will for me today? What is your will for me? Or a better thing what is, is, is like, to to instead of working, working from how you feel, mm -hmm. working from who you are. In Him. Yeah. In Him. So, yeah. And truly, because so often, you know, we want to have faith, but until we truly understand what faith is, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it really is what is unseen. Yeah. It's like it's well, stepping out and claiming victory before there is victory, but knowing through Christ, I can do all things through Christ. Yeah. You know, and so it gave me a different perspective today, and I was I was much more joyful knowing whatever he called me to do today. See, we didn't know we were going to film today. Right. You know. So yeah, we is, we didn't even know we were going to do and, this and, session today. And by saying, Lord, I want I want to do what you want me to do today. You know. Yeah. Then he can actually open the doors to those divine divine appointments that he wants because we're not only willing we are believing we're stepping out on faith and yeah. then when he meets us in that need where if i go at something with my own strength because before i pray that i'm like of my own strength the lord i am limited in what i can do today depending on my own strength is what i will do but when you relinquish that and you give it to god god depending on your strength today is how my day is going to go. Yeah. You know? yeah. I want to live and walk in His strength, in His grace, in His clarity of His mind, in His health. You know, so. And again, you know, we we understand all of that. I mean, you know, our, uh, we get a better grasp of all of this, and we keep growing in the Lord by knowing the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you spent, like I was saying before, you know. If you want to know God, you have to spend time with Him, and it's not just spending time. It's like it's like it's like your husband and wife, or your family, your kids, whatever it is. If you really want to know them, you have to spend not just time with them. And you can go to a ballpark and play play baseball or something, and you had fun, but you didn't get to know your child then. Maybe you knew how <laughs> if you could hit the ball or not, but I mean you don't get to know them. You spend it by getting very intimate with your, your family. Mm -hmm. You know, sitting down and having deep conversations and getting into, you know, the little corridors we have with inside us, whatever, and you know all of that. Then you know more about the person and that's what we need to do with God. And you do that through, um, I call it the God room. Uh, it's just your quality alone, quiet time with the Lord, mm -hmm. you know. And, and to what I'm noticing just, just in the way we talk mm -hmm. today, to me, I find it precious that when spending time with God, we get to understand how much He knows us. Because when, when we come to a place where, oh my gosh, you, you know me, you truly know me, you yeah. know how to speak to me, you know what moves me, you know what I can hear, you know where things are blocked. Just like the way that He's speaking the same thing to you through the visual as He was me through my health and through faith and stepping out. But to know that he truly, because what do we want in a relationship? I want to know that you truly know me. Right. If I spend yeah. 10 years with you and I feel like you've missed half of me, then I feel like that's the only, you only had half of an investment. You didn't invest in truly knowing all yeah, not of too, me. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, at, I want to be known. And when we spend time with God, we not only get to know him, we get to find out. He truly knows us because he's invested all that he is in knowing us. And to me, that's beautiful. And you can't ever come to that conclusion without spending time with him and letting him reveal to you, I know er everything about you. Yeah. I know how to speak to you in the night. I know how to impart wisdom to you. I know, and it's like, oh, you know me. That's love. Well, you know, and it, even the Bible says that, you know, uh, God says, I knew you while you were still in the womb. Mm -hmm. You know, while you're still not even born yet, basically. God says, I knew you. Yeah. And, you know, we get to know Him. Yeah. I, I want to know Him. I don't want to have been in this life all my life and not truly known Him and invested my time. But it is about what time you invest, you know, is what you will get back. Well, actually, that's not true. Because a lot of times we will invest 
we might not invest as much time as we should, but God is always faithful to invest in us because he still sees that finished work in us. You know, it, even if maybe one day we could have, we missed a prayer time or we wasn't with God like we needed to be, mm -hmm. he still sees the end of that and his love doesn't change at all. So he's not going to withhold from us just because we might have missed one time with him. But what happens is we miss him. We miss getting to be with him. And and it does sadden him because he's waiting for that time to be with us as well. So it's, you know, the relationship is so important. Oh, it is. Well, it's, it's actually everything when you think of it because, I mean, you know, for me, I think that if you had to put down, you know, uh, why are we here? You know, we've all asked ourselves that mm. point, you know, why am I even existing? Yeah. Why am I here? Um, <clears throat> I think it comes down to just, you know, we're here so that we know God. I mean, again, you think about that, God, God could have just had us all up in, in Eden mm -hmm. and been, you know, um, never had the, had, any, had the devil anywhere around us, never been tempted, never, you know, we could have just been mm -hmm. in a pristine state the whole time and never been through the, the death of, of Christ, wouldn't have been necessary and so forth. But he let all that, allowed all that to happen, you know, and basically just giving us our free choice and he knew what we were gonna do, he but he also had a plan. Him. But he did all that so that we know I mean, we, now we know that we know just how much God loves us. To send His Son. Yes. Would you do that? I mean, would you take your son and let him go through all that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, just for people that probably don't even care about him? And there's a lot that don't. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, God loves you that much, and Christ, who loves us that much, to mm -hmm. go through all of that. You know, it, we could have been up there and God could have said, you know, I really love you, and go, oh yeah, I know God, you know, you're mm -hmm. beautiful, you do things for us. And we would have known Him, His love, at that level. But we would have no not sacrifice. known it. Now yeah. we know it with Now we know sacrifice. it at a deeper depth, yeah. and it really hits us like, wow, you really love me. You know, and we know all this um, because of the sacrifices that, you know, mm -hmm. Christ made and whatever. So getting to know God, um, you know, if you look at all that, and again, the, the, the best place is His Word. Mm -hmm. You know, people can have different perceptions. I could, you know, have maybe not got the right perception on some of the things that I've seen. I thought, oh, God was moving in a certain way, and maybe it wasn't that way. But the Bible mm -hmm. is the truth. Yeah. It says, you know, that the Bible is going to last forever. God's Word will last forever. You know, like the, the verse we just read, you know. Where but, it says, you know, keeping in mind, we have relationship with the Father only because of the blood of Christ. Only through the mediator. I mean, the key, of course, is the Word, but only through Christ can we know the Father. Because the Father can't look upon sin, so He looks through Christ in us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, still, if people haven't accepted the Lord Jesus and let Him come into their heart, it's very difficult. You know, it's still about Christ and inviting Christ in. It's not really so much about inviting Him, but receiving Him. And receiving Him. What other deity was about, all I want is for you to receive my sacrifice, receive my love. And that's all that this is. The keys of the kingdom are only in receiving Christ, mm -hmm. receiving the sacrifice. I mean, he's not even asking anything. He's just asking us to receive. I know. Receive. You know, I was thinking about that the other day, and it's like, if you were going to put it into a more of a modern kind of thing, it's almost like, you know, if you have some people that are struggling, I mean, they're, maybe they're living out on the street, and they're, you know, eating garbage, whatever, because they don't have money, and you go, oh, I'm going to help those people out, and you say, I'm going to really help them out and you take a million dollars and you throw it in a bank account, mm -hmm. okay, and you put it in their name, and you come back to them and say, you have a million dollars. And they go, yeah, right. And I go, no, no, you really have it. All you're gonna do is go to, you know, go to the bank yes. and get it. And they're going, I don't believe you. Go, no, no, it's really there. And they're going, there. yeah, 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 okay. And they walk away. That's pretty much what the unbelievers are doing. Yeah. You know, we're telling them, 
you've got riches, you're, you've got everything, you know, everything that you want is right there, you just got to go get it. Mm -hmm. And everybody's going, and most yeah, people, well, it's too good to and believe. what they long for is relationship and long for love. They want a loving, deep relationship. That's what everybody longs for. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not even riches God. Even God. That. It is that loving relationship. So it's, yeah. Yeah, and again, you know, too, better serve the Lord um, is to get to know Him better, mm -hmm. and you do that through your quiet, alone time with God. Yeah. So spend time alone with God. Spend quality time with the Lord. And wait on the Lord. Listen to what He has to say as well as what you might have to say to Him. Thank you. Thank you. There's nothing more important in life than your personal relationship with God. Nothing.